Thanks to Advance Ag for having all of us here today. This is a terrific um, event for South Australia and, and brilliant to be here on, on behalf of AgRib. So before we get into it, a bit about, a bit about me, why am I even standing here? You'll notice I'm 10,000 miles away from home and, and well and truly a palm on Aussie soil, so I apologise for that. But I, uh, I'm a sixth generation family farmer in South East England. Uh, on my mum's side, mum had three older brothers, so she didn't inherit the family farm. But we finished up with chickens in South East England in Kent. And five years ago, the business was wound down. Mum and dad took the decision to, to call it a day. We were rearing point of lay hens for um, farmers all around the UK that wanted uh, to have their own laying hens. And I was busy in London working in technology companies and PwC and doing fun stuff, traveling the world, all that kind of thing. And with hindsight, I wish I'd taken more of an interest because we had sale records on the back of the shed door that were five bar gates by breed of what we were selling and when. We had no insight into what we were doing on farm. So when, I, when we wound that business down, I did a little bit of digging and I found AgriWeb online, albeit 10,000 miles away in Sydney. And Justin and I spoke remotely and here I am some two years on at the company, as Andrew mentioned, looking after the customer success team uh, out of Australia. What are we going to go through today? So, you know, change to the advanced ag guys. This is the structure we're going to go through. We're going to begin with why adopt technology? Why are we even beginning and having these conversations about technology on farm? Number two is how do we maximize the uptake? So for the producers in the room, how do we use more of what we have? And for those that are interested in technology, how do we make farmers use products more, use technology more, get invested and use what, they're, what, they're, what you're providing to them? driving that change and we'll finish up with the outcomes so it's all very well having pretty pictures and cool bits of tech hardware software pretty pictures and graphs etc it's rubbish in rubbish out we all know that from from the from day dot so what are the outcomes what are the benefits what efficiency can we drive on farm and we'll talk through some of that that we've seen at agro to date so first of all the burning question why adopt technology it's something that starts, and actually um, Darren mentioned it in his discussion earlier on the, on the keynote, is the population is growing and continues to grow. We're going to be at 9 billion people in 2050, which sounds a long way away, but we're nearly almost a third of the way through 2020, so it's going pretty quickly. And not only that, uh, we're struggling from a hectare perspective to provide enough efficiency in the world to feed those individuals. This is a global landscape. It's not an isolated issue for each grower in the world or producer in the world. This is a global, global problem that needs to be solved. We've run out of time, we've run out of acreage or hectareage, and we need to make changes to that. So how do we do that? How do we deliver on that efficiency, that improvement? Well, this is a study that came out a few months ago. Based on that population, we need 70% more food, but we need to deliver that more efficiently. And that's been the, the basis of all of the discussions today. How do we make, drive more efficiencies and improvements in agriculture? And then the burning question on everyone's lips, I get a lot in my role working for a livestock management software company, is well, what about carbon? What are you going to do about carbon emissions? You're the third biggest global emitter. What's changing? What's happening? Well, it's on us. Uh, you know, we, we were at VOCAG last week, our chairman, Justin Webb, talking about the importance of carbon neutrality and, uh, particularly in the cattle industry and the importance of provenance, the importance of grazing, and that's what we're supporting fundamentally here at AgriWeb. But to play back then, who's helping us on that journey? What's happening now that has enabled these conversations today, that's enabled us everyone to be in the room today? Well, the world landscape is changing dramatically. If you look at these companies by market cap from 2001 through to 2011, you see the green icons of the software companies, okay? Now, what were these oil browns and large banks like Citigroup providing for the agricultural industry? Bit of petrol to put in a tractor, perhaps. But life is changing. And in the last five years through 2016, Apple, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, these are the guys that have come to the, come to the table. Now, it's, it's quite easy to sit here and say, well, right west coast of California, Silicon Valley, people made a lot of money. Jeff Bezos has uh, made a few dollars here and there. Brilliant. But actually, the mechanics, the tools, the processes, if we think about what everyone has in their pocket today, what you can now do with one of these is quite unbelievable. 
And that's where I think we've been very lucky in our four years at Agro that I'll come on to. But we've been in a, able to use these tools to enable improvements on farm. Hands up for who's had a blockbuster in the room. There was a blockbuster in Canterbury in, in Kent, not far from home, many moons ago. And who's had a Netflix? So within two years of this comment from the CEO of Blockbuster, um, the CEO of Blockbuster, they went bankrupt. And let's just think about that. So Netflix as a provider, what have they, what have they changed fundamentally as we sit here today? You can take out your phone, you can pay a subscription amount every month, you can watch an enormous amount of content on the Adelaide 4G outside the back of reception here. Whereas back in the day, it was go to a Blockbuster, take a video out, take it back, you got fined if it was late. What they've done is fundamentally changed the game in the space of years, not decades even. So that's a bit about the why. The industry is changing. Farming is not exempt to that. The blockbusters and, and uh, Netflix stories continue across industries around the world at this point in time. But what about AgriEv? What, what are we doing? How, how come we're speaking here today? Well, in terms of the uptake and driving the change, we wouldn't be still doing what we're doing four years into running a subscription software company if customers weren't taking up our technology on farm. Startups don't make much progress until you have customer adoption, adoption and usage. We're going to build on that simplicity, the integrations and the level of support that you see at technology companies like Netflix and work through how we have that in place at Agrip. But before we go there, a bit about where we are. This heat map shows um, the farmers, the livestock, and indeed the hectareage that we now have under management at Agrib. It's a huge privilege to stand here after such a short period of time and just show on a page the progress that we've made in Australia. Nearly 10 million animals under management, and farmers are joining us every hour of every day around the world now as we've launched back home in the UK for me. With this comes responsibility, data, uh, data responsibility, it's the farmer's data, but one of our values is to live for the farmer. We've taken an approach as a technology company to always work for the farmer and with the farmer rather than anyone else at this point in time in the, in the ecosystem around them. But it's always challenging. And how come we're in that position? Hopefully this shows up okay. Um, this was technology 20 years ago in the livestock industry. Now, if you think about 20 years ago, no one was sending WhatsApp messages, no one was watching Netflix, so actually it was brilliant. It was fantastic for that particular point in time. So we're not some white knight that's strolled into town and been like, we're the first to do this, it's, you know, we're changing the game. We're just applying simplicity to something that, as I've discussed, has been enabled by the guys out on the West Coast, the Amazons, the Facebooks, the uh, Amazon Web Services Data Storage, for example. And we, we do that through simplicity. We've taken all those tools built on Google Maps, on Apple and Android, to provide a simple yet powerful solution for livestock operators around the world. We're not changing the way anyone's farming. We're not asking you to make different decisions or execute in different ways. We're providing a solution that complements it. I think that's a really, really important point. In this, what you're seeing on loop here, we're just moving animals from paddock to paddock. So we're picking up a mob of sheep and moving them across the farm. In the background, the algorithms are working out grazing days, uh, DSE loads, stocking rates, etc. But on average, our customers spend about five minutes every day on their iPhones or Android. And that can be online, it can be <coughs> offline, it can be out in the paddock, it can be in the newt. But as the previous presentation talked about, and I mentioned earlier, rubbish in, rubbish out. So you're keeping the record at that point in time. You remember it, it's front of mind. If you ask me to go and work a 15-hour shift in 45 degrees, come back in at the evening and sit in front of a spreadsheet like that and provide a, provide a detail of what I'd done that day, I, I don't know anyone in the world that would be able to do that. But we now live in a time where it is possible, where we do have those tools we can lean on. Secondly is the ecosystem. So I mentioned we live for the farmer, but crucially we put the farmer first in all of this. So for livestock farmers in Australia and around the world, it's been a very disconnected environment, both for tools and for stakeholders. If you take a step back, retailers, think about purchasing uh, treatments in store. Think about your accountant providing livestock schedules at the end of the period. The processor, working with Thomas Foods, for example, and the visibility of the supply chain, getting the right price for your animals. 
the regulatory work, biosecurity, LPA, MLA, how do you provide that? And how, in order to do that, um, do you put the farmer first? That's the, our number one adoption, uh, number one approach at Agrib is put the farmer first, put the farmer in the middle of the light bulb and make an ecosystem around them that gives them their time back, makes them more efficient, more informed, more compliant every day on farm. And finally, support. So talking about this adoption, talking about how you drive a better adoption on farm. Now, don't get me wrong, Captain Hindsight and Retrospect Man, or however you want to approach them, we've had four and a half years at this. Like we, we've had the benefit of looking back at what we've learned. And importantly, this isn't the software world of old where you sold a CD-ROM, people paid a huge amount of money up front for it, you chucked it over the fence and away you go. Software as a service, as we've been talking about today, is an ongoing subscription. We're producing a product update every week of the year. But crucially, towards that as well, we're running workshops on Zoom, on webinars, on farm. We're still at field days. We're still going out to some of our larger customers in Australia that have upwards of 40, 50, 60, 70, 100 users on Agreb, running hundreds of thousands of animals, running on farm training. That's really, really important because the uptake still comes from the farmer. The uptake still comes from the producer. You want to make sure those records are as good as possible. Again, it doesn't just stop beyond one-to-one -one conversations. How do we make sure our help centers are correct? How do we make sure that people have case studies and understandings of what other farmers are doing that they want to learn from? This is an industry that has continued to use technology since day dot. You don't have the advantage of when the tractor breaks in the middle of the paddock. You can't just you know, ring someone up and ask for help. You've got to fix it yourself. This is, a, this is an industry that's absolutely rammed full of everyone that wants to uptake and take on technology and improvement. The tools just haven't been there. And finally, connecting farmers. I mentioned Facebook earlier. Without Facebook, we wouldn't have our Agrib community. Without the Agrib community, we wouldn't have had our Helping Hands project, which we ran after the fires. Connecting those that had suffered in the fires and allowing them to communicate with each other, allowing them to share resources, share labour, and come out the other side. So that's a bit about the reason for technology. That's a bit around how do we maximise uptake. But as I mentioned, the most important bit, arguably, once you've gone through those two hurdles, is what are the outcomes? What are the benefits? What are the efficiencies we can make from that? This is a customer in northern New South Wales in his late 60s. Um, his old paper notebook in his left hand, his Agreb subscription on his right hand with his farm map. 90% of farmers all around the world still run their businesses with a notebook. And there's huge problems with this. We get phone calls most days of the week. It's either been ploughed, it's been in a washing machine, um, <laughs> it's, been, it's been lost. Uh, it's all normally from... Um, Wives are other halves who ring up and said, it's the fourth notebook that's gone through the wash this year, I've had enough, it's time, to, it's time to move on. But that's really, really important. We now have a tool there on the right-hand side where <laughs> if said iPhone does go, you know, arguably they're waterproof nowadays, but if it does get destroyed, it's all in the cloud. We're using Amazon Web Services, the leading cloud technology storage provider in the, wor in the world to keep farmers' data. And the outcome, the, the output of that is guys like Lockie Sears, who's um, over near Lucendale, who's using all sorts of tools. This isn't AgriWeb specific, um, but he's using all sorts of technology tools on farm to increase uh, efficiencies and lower costs of production. And he says the opportunity continues to present itself every day, every week, every month of the year. So from efficiency to audit and compliance, who wants to sit there for two or three days when they get the call from the auditor saying, oh, I need to prepare for my audit records, I need to get my piece of paper together, I need to see what I've got in the shed, what treatments I've got and when and where and how. With tools like AgriWeb, the audits now take minutes rather than hours. And not just that time saving, but for guys like David in South Australia, he's getting an extra 30 cents a kilo for joining the pasture certified accreditation scheme. So the time he's saved from not preparing for audits, the time he's saved from not putting his notebook through the washing machine, the outcome of that is he's able to join other programs. He's able to extract more value out of what he's doing.
We focus on three key areas from a mobile perspective, livestock and pasture management. 80% of our farmers are running mixed operations. That's really, really important. Something I'll come on to later. Um, how do you get visibility? Station to station. In many, in many now, cases now, station to Hedco. How does, head, how does the Hedco or group company keep an eye on what's happening across the, across the visibility? Inventory management. What do we have on farm and when? Dollars, batch numbers, withholding periods, what's gone out of date, when, where, how, what efficiencies can we make in that respect? And finally, task management. You're out 100 Ks from home, different block, miles away. It's probably cost you $5 in fuel to get there and back. You've seen a fence post gone down. You need to drop a pin exactly where you're located on Google Maps and then assign that task to the worker or helper that you have to do that. Now, we have a customer in Western Australia who takes us to the extreme. He has a German working holiday maker each year. Don't ask me why they're German, but they're always German. And he spends the nine months leading up to their arrival dropping pins where he sees stones across their property. German working holiday maker arrives, logs into the AgriAb app. He's quite excited. Cool bit of kit. iPhone, Wicked Farm in WA. And you can't see the map because it's just covered in pins. So he spends his first three weeks picking up stones. <laughs> now, that's the extreme side of it, right? But for, again, we come back to Michael Kobiak. How do you ensure you keep records, not just for now, not just for the decision-making at this point in time, the live decision-making, but preparing for future generations? Because sometimes it's all in here. Sometimes it's not even in the paper notebook. It's all in here. So these are some of the outcomes. See, there's some of the benefits, some of the efficiencies that we see every day coming out of customers who get back to the simplicity, get back to keeping better records on farm, and are really clearly now preparing themselves for the future. I'll finish with this quote from the MLA. They've recently said that we can see gains of $14 to $118 through the use of on-farm technology and data. It comes back to numbers. Numbers puts food on the table. Numbers keeps farms like my mum and dad in business. And that's really, really important. And luckily, at this point in time, we now have a technology stack around us. The Amazons exist. The Googles exist for maps. Facebooks exist for communities, which is amazing. And I think being in an industry at this point in time, with such an amazing turnout today, shows evidence that there is a huge, huge desire for change, desire to improve. And I think it's the responsibility of all of us to educate governments, public bodies, and educate farmers who fundamentally want it like never before. That is the most amazing thing. People say, oh, is it difficult providing a technology solution to farmers? Absolutely not. It's more the fact that we need as a responsibility to get together and provide that visibility to those individuals to allow them to make more efficient, more informed and better decisions on farm.